Texas Motor Speedway, stop number eight in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. And thus far in 2008, for the first time in chase history, we have yet to have a non-chase driver win a race. That brings us to our AT&T Crew Chief Challenge question. Which driver will become the first non-chase driver to win a chase race this season? Could it be Mark Martin, Martin Truex Jr., Damon McMurray, or David Reagan? To play, text the word CREW to 191 on your AT&T wireless phone and send in your answer. The results will be shown later in the race. Standard text rates will apply. Up front, it is Clint Boyer, who is our second leader today. He has led the last 12 consecutive laps. There's the 0-2 car, Joey Logano, the 18-year-old, making only his third career start, and uh, he is struggling early on in the 0-2. Yeah, just went a lap down right there, so finding going a little bit rough. He just barely made it into this race, the 43rd starter. See Jeff Gordon sliding back some here as Jamie McMurray is trying to take away the fifth spot from him now. What's going on with uh, Jeff Gordon, Mike? Well, I can't say that this is unexpected, Doc, because I spoke with crew chief Steve Letarte this morning, and he said despite the fact that we were strong in qualifying, they felt like they really struggled in race trim during practice. He said just typical stuff for Texas. Could not get comfortable. The balance was shifting between tight and loose throughout the course of practice, and right now what he's saying, tight middle, loose off, and not very good. Well, he has dodged a couple of bullets already. Here's the 99 car. What a surprise that Carl Edwards is up on the wheel here early on as he goes by and takes uh, the third spot away. Yeah, he's doing everything that he can possibly do to try to make this championship closer. And you see he's in the third spot now as he took that away from Dale Jr. One guy on the move, too, is that 44, David Rudman. Got that high line working. He's moved into the second spot in that UPS Toyota. In the garage area prior to the race today, a lot of veteran crew chiefs said that if you want to look, watch a car today, watch that 44. Rudman might just be the guy to beat. We've talked a lot about how this race team, Michael Walter Racing, has really improved throughout this year. And it's nice to see that happening. And they're getting David Rudman cars that uh, can keep up with his abilities now. Dave? And I asked David about that, the uh, garage area talk that your car was pretty good. And he said, well, we were really good at one point yesterday, but the track changed and I wasn't too sure about it. Then I looked at all the data of the lap times and I realized that even when I didn't feel that great, we were pretty comparable with everybody else. So I think that was just a nice conservative way of saying, yeah, we're going to be okay. <laughs> we talk about comebacks. He finished 43rd in this race a year ago and 41st here in April. So uh, a big difference, big jump by that Michael Walter team in terms of comp competition here in this race. See Carl there being shown um, second in the points. Right now, 160 points back. And a six second margin uh, in our chase tracker ahead of the, the car he's actually chasing in the point standing, Jimmy Johnson. I mean, Murray's car looks like it's handling great. He just turned that car dead left, get in the corner and stuck. He's sliding backwards just a little bit. He lost a couple of spots and looks like he's going to lose this one here. Yeah, it really looked like that he was on the march. He was going to go up there and take the lead away from Clint Boyer, but Clint's done a nice job of hanging on, even though he's getting beat by about two tenths a lap uh, by David Rudman and Carl Edwards. Well, what might this might be uh, a trend that they're kind of reversed with this ADA team. It's be better at the end of the race. They've been <laughs> great at the beginning. So we've seen him run up there and get the lead early on, but maybe this is a good sign for the end of the race. And what's happening with the 88 cars? Exactly what happened about five or six laps ago with the 24. And I was told that they went over to the 88 talking about Jeff Gordon's bunch and borrowed the setup from Earnhardt Jr. So now both these cars are struggling. This is our outside pole sitter, Martin Truex Jr., but he's all the way back to 11. What's going on with him, Jamie? Well, he started second, but he's reporting the same thing, tight in the middle, loose off. But Andy, you'll appreciate this. I talked to Kevin Bono Mannion, his crew chief, and he said, you know what? We have nothing to lose, so I threw this setup at it yesterday, and he called it an off-the-wall setup. He said, I put it on the car, went home, and I couldn't sleep all night. I got here this morning, and I completely changed it, went back to what was proven. It's not working out for him, but Andy, I'm sure you can relate to that. Oh, yeah, I've had plenty of those days, unfortunately. But they'll, they've still got a lot of time to work on this car and get it better. And Truex has a history of running really well here at Texas. He finished third, led a lot of laps in this race a year ago. They are chasing the 0-7 uh, of Clint Boyer, the 19 car of Elliott Sadler, just trying to hang on the lead lap. 
Now, one of the cars we thought would be good today was Matt Kenseth. He started sixth and right now is riding in seventh position. Dave. And Doc, his crew chief Chip Golan told me this morning, we were just as good as anyone else's, but we weren't really happy with it, but we were as good as we were going to make it. But that's changed a little bit since the start of this race. Listen. Took off okay. Just gets really loose like we got way too much air in the tires. There's something up on top of the track. And just super, super loose like the right rear is out on the ground. That's the big foot of rubber and I'm up here on your first stop here. 3240. Suggesting putting a, a spring rubber into the left rear. Let's go to the Chevy cutaway car and find out from Tim Brewer how that's done and what change that might make. Thanks, Dave. Folks, when you start the race, as you go through that transition to the hot race track, the car builds up air pressure in the rear tire. And you've got a loose characteristic. Well, that means the right rear tire is getting hot. As it's getting hotter, it's building up air pressure, and you feel the bumps a lot more. The back of the car has a tendency to chatter out. So what you're going to do on a pit stop, you've got provisions made in the car. And we've got a spring hanging right here with a rubber. And what we're going to do, we're just going to insert that thing because we can tighten the car up by increasing the left rear spring rate. But still yet, there's going to be a lot of transitions the car is going to go through today so you're going to hear us talk about the spring rates track bars and wedge all day long now you see that spring rubber tied to the spring that's what they'll do they'll take that on a pit stop and just roll it right in there if they're loose and uh, those tire pressures are easy to change because they can do that before the car ever gets there and that's a quick change that uh, sounds like what matt needs this is seventh eighth and ninth looking back from jimmy johnson now and greg biffle who's starting to move in and dj we talk about how much rapid transition this racetrack has so it's a lot different than atlanta and charlotte yeah it really is and, and we heard rusty talk about it in the countdown show and it's what every driver faces here are the transitions you go off the straightaway into the corner you do, you pick up the banking immediately yet there's no transition into it so it, it really makes for a loose condition going down into each of the corners and then as you come out of two and four it makes it difficult because you go from the 24 degree banking right to the straightaway, which is relatively flat. So it makes it very difficult for these drivers. And Dale, you'd have to admit that probably turn two here at the Texas Motor Speedway is the toughest turn as far as losing that transition. We go to a lot of tracks like Charlotte Motor Speedway, the Lowe's Motor Speedway, they're talking out of Atlanta. But this particular track, like you were saying, you know, right before the race, I was talking to Greg Biffle and he said, man, I really struggle in turn two because that banking falls off so much. And he said, Rusty, I think the other thing you're going to see is a lot of guys running on the bottom in one and two more than we've seen in the past because the bump starts at the bottom of the track and gets real, real a Bruce, a real big time up on top of the track. So he likes the bottom in one and two. As we see, uh, Biffle working, he just passed Jimmy Johnson there, and uh, Juan Pablo Montoya in that 42 still coming. So he takes that spot away from Jimmy Johnson. Montoya running way up at the top of the racetrack, but he's making it work as he makes a move on Greg Biffle. Pit stops moving in now. We'll come back and cover him in just a moment.